Alrighty, so another modification on the Green Go Hellcat. Going to be ripping this box out and replacing it with the B Wood Equal Air Intake. Car only has like about 7,000 miles on it now. I'm really curious to see if this um, filter has been changed or if it's the original, what condition it's in. It's pretty funny though, since this car came from a colder colder states it came with a little engine block heater <laughs> which is pretty dang funny but yeah so i already opened it up <clears throat> this is the intake got a couple other pieces of hardware there and I went with a matte black finish this time. Um, I really wanted to do Green Go. Um, the people from Be Woody were really nice and they sent me a paint sample actually. Uh, but this was sublime or something. I forget what it is. As you can see, the color of the intake would have been quite a bit lighter. And I wasn't too into that. So, I went with a matte black finish. But, anyways, I'm going to work on getting this puppy installed. And uh, can't wait to hear how she sounds once it's all done. I went and I picked up a Christmas tree this afternoon and actually threw it on top of the Hellcat. <laughs> Um, I posted a couple picture, pictures in one of the Hellcat forums and uh, people are going nuts. Oh man, you're damaging the paint, you're doing this, you're doing that. Well, it's my car. I knew it was going to grind some gears, so... I knew I'd get some uh, entertainment from posting those photos. But anyways, let's get this crap unwrapped. And then get working on installing the magical Be Woody intake and hearing the difference. Can't wait. Just want to do a quick little drive, show you guys how non existent the supercharger wine is uh, with the stock air box. Especially um, when you do uh, the muffler and resonator delete. I mean, it really is non-existent. Let's see, let's downshift a little bit. It's not the best video on earth because I got some traffic ahead of me and I can't really accelerate too hard, but it's pretty non-existent. So quick little update, went ahead and unplugged this sensor, pulled it out, um, unscrew these three screws here. This is ready to be pulled out and taken out. And uh, they say it's an eight millimeter, but I i mean, I don't know if they say it's an eight millimeter, but I know it's bigger than an eight. That's like a 10 or a 12. Um, pull the box out and uh, we'll go from there actually. Cut it that top off. Let's see what condition this filter is in. Doesn't look too bad at all. A little bit of dirt here and there. I'm guessing that's an OEM filter because uh, I remember the one from my previous Hellcat looking the same. <clears throat> so I'll throw that right there. Then we gotta unbolt this puppy right here. Then this should come out after that. And then the fun part is gonna be removing that air vent here um they basically tell you not to be afraid to pull hard so uh we'll see how that goes 
but I mean this is definitely coming out as well here um, so I mean it looks like it just twists off like on the other one if I'm not mistaken there are some push clips here so I might try to slide that off first we'll see I will be very gentle so that I don't damage anything but yeah remove that bolt pull this puppy out pull like heck to remove that air vent and then we should be getting to the reassembly of the intake I got my cover here and uh, I lied it's not matte black it's a flat black it's got a little bit of shine to it and I actually really like the the look and finish of it so far I'm I'm extremely impressed with what it looks like <clears throat> another difference between my other intake that I installed on my previous Hellcat I really appreciate that they took the time they put the little rubber grommets in for you uh, looks like there's a rubber grommet there that's to attach the intake pieces um, to the snout of the supercharger <clears throat> so anyways so I'm gonna try to make these pretty quick um, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory to loosen this up. That's going to pull off. Obviously, you pull this out before I do that. And uh, we'll go from there. I'll update you guys shortly. Okay, so for this portion right here, what I did was get my hand over here, pull as hard as I could, and then kind of towards the engine bay. <laughs> and it came loose. Now it's just about... Dashing this mother trucker out, oh, gosh dang. Mother trucker. I heard the pop though. It's loose in there. Uh, Nikes, it is. Fudging mother trucking tough. So I gotta pull as hard as I can towards the driver's side and then turn it while I'm pulling this way towards the engine. Yep. So let's do that right here. Put the camera down. Oh, son of a gun. Fudge me. Almost out. Oh my god, holy crap. That was struggling tough. Wish you guys could uh, have seen it, but once again, then set up my truck and tripod. Anyways, that shiz wasn't there. I mean, you can hear me. I'm huffing and puffing. That shiz was in there. So, I left it recording. It's because the last time I filmed this, I did not. Just so that you guys can get an idea, man. It takes some, it takes some truck and force to pull that pile out. You know? But, as you can see, Nothing was damaged. Yeah, I think nothing was damaged. Yeah, nothing was damaged. Scared me for a second there. Nothing was damaged that can be reused if somebody pleases. Um, and yeah, I just took a crap ton of force. Pulling it towards the driver. At the same time, kind of like lifting up, but sideways turning, wiggling it out. Pulling out as much as you can, and then it just like swung out. So I'll be totally honest with you guys. That is the most difficult part of this install. So next piece is a puzzle. Removing this shiz. Um, I need to s remember, but it will be very easy to figure out if I'm loosening this bolt or that bolt. It might be this bolt, but it might be that bolt. I'm about to find out. <laughs> Um, so that I can attach the intake 
Plus it's gonna be bolted onto here. By the way, I lied to you guys, this was an eight millimeter, not a 10 or a 12. <clears throat> so, this is going to go into there and bolt onto one of those two bolts. Uh, once I figure that out, I'll go ahead and update you guys and let you know which one of those bolts it was. Also, uh, the instructions say to disconnect the negative side of your battery terminal, which is in the back of the vehicle. So uh, make sure you guys do that before you get started on the job. And I'm not an expert, so if you guys copy this video and some crazy shit happens on your car, well, sorry, man, but non-disclosure right here or disclosure or whatever. Um not my fault All right so i caught my breath from the last step <clears throat> so what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen this it's a 10 millimeter it's from the coil pack the closest coil pack to the front whatever on the side um and then what we want to do is slide this puppy into there and get that aligned to there um they supplied me with two spacers and this is only if it is needed. So I am gonna see, I believe on the last intake that I installed in my 2015, I ended up needing a spacer. So chances are I'm gonna need a spacer for this one as well. But uh, we're just about to find out right now. So here's the latest and greatest. The flat black looks super nice, I like it a lot. Got this puppy done, this puppy tied and then. Um, so be careful with this bolt. It is, It was very easy to loosen, so you don't want to tighten it too much. I ended up not needing a spacer. I believe on my last intake that I did, I used the smallest spacer on it. This one, as you can see, I did not need that. One tip for you guys, though. This is on the 2017. I... The 15 that I did was a little different. There's some different stuff going on over here. But uh, one tip I can give you is obviously unmake this stuff, pull out the sensor like you saw, lube it up just a tiny bit, like with some dry lubricant or something, and install these pieces prior to bolting the intake, or not bolting it in, you know, putting it into place. And installing these you don't want to get to this point and then have to pop these sensors in because what you're gonna do is while you're pushing in this is gonna the whole grommet is just gonna pop into the intake anyways rookie noob mistake on my part on um, second intake that I did but it's been such a long time that you know I just got excited to see that the grommets were already put in place and Cut to the point, blah, 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 popped it in, boom, grommet went inside, so I had to unbolt everything, pull it out, super simple, super easy, super quick, but anyways, if you're watching this, just a little tip for you. Next piece of the puzzle, grabbing the rain guard, popping the sucker on, and we are finished. I ended up pulling this engine cover off, totally not needed, although I just kind of wanted to see what was cracking over here uh, to the top and then the, whatever. This thing swivels a little bit. So I just wanted for my own self to see what was going on over there. So that's why I took that off, but totally unneeded. So I'll grab the rain cover, pop it on and uh, see how she looks. All right guys, here's the finished product. Um, flat black, it's a little oily from my hands. Um, everything is installed, lightly tied in, like I said there, you don't want to go too nuts. Everything's tight, everything's plugged in. Um, I left one of these clips out just to show you, because I removed these clips so that I could install that bolt underneath there. It, it comes bolted into the rain shield. <clears throat> and then you reuse the bolt from your other uh, air box, but anyway, super simple. These clips come out and go in. Done. So it is officially done. 
now the only thing left to do is start her up and take her for a spin see how it sounds i like how it looks so far though <clears throat> the other one was powder coated uh like a pearl white uh to match my uh color of my vent okay um but yeah that's what it looks like in the engine bay i think it looks great i'm super happy that i went with this color i was kind of afraid that it wasn't going to look very special but i mean it looks it looks awesome i love it Alright, got the B Wood equal there and take installed. Gonna go on a first little spin. See if the supercharger sound is a little bit more noticeable. guys so this is with the b woody installed i'm gonna jump on the highway just to give you guys a feel i know i didn't do that with the stock but so i have the muffler cut out resonator cut out i do have the cats and this is with the b woody getting onto the freeway and default settings Obviously not flooring it. <clears throat> it's extremely cold, so I didn't floor it, obviously, but... <clears throat> Anyways, that gives you an idea. I can definitely say that you can definitely notice the supercharger mine more so that was windows up sunroof closed fault street set up with the uh, mufflers cut out, resonators cut out, cat still in place, and now with the B Woody installed, so. Definitely a lot more noticeable, and I don't know, I'm happy with it. Either way, I love the look that the B Woody intakes. Uh, give the engine bay and uh, whatever it's definitely not one of those modifications that you do because you expect to get some massive performance gains or anything like that it's for me it's an aesthetics cosmetics thing and uh, secondly to make that supercharger wine more noticeable uh, because after doing an exhaust it definitely starts to get dampened um i wish i could have somebody film me like drive by or whatever but because i mean the supercharger wine is insanely noticeable outside of the car uh when you're driving by and all that good stuff with the exhaust mods and everything you got a lot of nice cracks and pops <clears throat> so yeah anyways 
you guys are thinking about doing this cold air intake, I would definitely recommend it. It looks amazing, performs amazing, uh, as in it makes your supercharger wine quite a bit more noticeable. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Not exactly sure what else I got coming, uh, but stay tuned and we'll see.